We've seen this scene before. Gary Blair stepping onto the court at Reed Arena, but tonight it's different. He steps onto the floor that newly bears his name one last time, but with the same thought in his head that has been there all 50 years of his coaching career, winning. It's like take one, two, three. I feel like John Wayne or Rock Hudson. Thank you, Coach. Yes, ma'am. No one loves um, women's basketball more than Coach Blair. Excellence, a steward of the game, guardian of the game. For the first time in school history, the Aggies are the champs. Graceful, humble, caring. Wisdom, knowledge, a love for the game, love for people. It's time to go do the other things in life and sit up in the stands and do the same thing you do. Second guess the coaches. It's an honor to watch SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions tonight. Gary Blair, over 850 career wins. He is a legend in basketball. Tonight marks his final home game, and he is standing by with Steffi Sorensen. Gary, your last time taking the court tonight. What were your thoughts when you took it? Just about South Carolina. Have I prepared our team enough? That's a gold medal coach down there. I just have a challenge coin and I respect her and her program so much, but this is all about Texas A&M. We got a great crowd tonight, a national TV audience. We want to give the country a show, and we appreciate the coverage, but right now it's time to get to business. 40 minutes of great basketball. Thanks, Coach, for your time. Thank you. If that doesn't sum up Gary Blair's mindset, he is all about the game. He always has been about his players, about his staff, and about making sure they are prepared. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And what a special night and an honor for us to be here to see Gary Blair's final home game. He's going to retire at the end of the season. Well, when you look at what Gary Blair has done, he took over a program that had not been winning in over seven years. He instantly brought a winning attitude. You look at this arena, the attendance that is here. It is because of Gary Blair that Texas A&M is on the map for women's basketball. Yeah, he has been an advocate for the game, for players. So many players that he has coached over his 50 total years of coaching in several different sports. He is the all-time winningest coach in Texas A&M men's and women's basketball history. And the last time he takes the floor here in Reed Arena, newly named Gary Blair Court. Gary Blair talked about, yeah, this, this night, the court being named after him. And he said, no, I don't want this to be about me. This is about we. He wants his team to put on a good show in his final outing tonight. And a tall test awaits the Aggies that is, as it is number one South Carolina as the opponent, boasting the front runner for National Player of the Year in Aaliyah Boston. And here comes Texas A&M's first possession. You'll see Mackenzie Green getting the starting lineup over Jordan Nixon. And Gary Blair talked to us about that decision. Well, he also talked about he wanted to execute this elevator screen. He wanted to come out. This is a play that they would normally run at the end of the game. He said, I'm starting with it from the beginning. South Carolina keeping that with, with that consistent starting five. Aaliyah Boston, number four in the black jersey. She has 19 straight double-doubles, tied the SEC record that Sylvia Fowles set in their last game against Tennessee on Sunday. That's interesting. With Texas A&M's defense, the one thing that they were going to attempt to do with South Carolina is force the outside shot. When that happens, though, they've got to box out and not allow those second-chance opportunities. Guadasha Hoppy with the basketball right now, number two in the cream jersey tonight. Bree Beal back the other way. Henderson able to corral it. And the ball goes into the hands of Kayla Wells, Texas A&M's leading scorer. They give it back to her for the layup. Turnovers for South Carolina right now. That's something that they have cleaned up as of late. Only 12 in the last couple of games. 
Aaliyah Patty is guarding Aaliyah Boston right now, and it is a battle on that block. Five seconds on the shot clock. Victoria Saxton will take the long two rebound into the hands of Mackenzie Green. What's the difference with Mackenzie Green running the point as opposed to Jordan Nixon? Well, Jordan Nixon is a scoring point guard, so she's trying to balance when she looks for her time to shoot and when to run the offense. And right now, Gary Blair, it's more important to run the offense and get the specific shots he wants. Destiny Pitts getting around the defense. Tough shot, will not fall. South Carolina trying to work in transition. We mentioned Aaliyah Boston, 19 straight double-doubles. It takes so much effort, so much consistency on both ends to accomplish that, and we could see her set a new record tonight. Well, and not only does she have 19 consecutive, a lot of those opponents have been against top-ranked teams. So it hasn't been something easy that comes against teams that are of lesser talent. It's been against some tough competition. Mackenzie Green with the bucket for Texas A&M, a four-point lead. Keep an eye on Destiny Pitts for Texas A&M. She's hanging out in the post. She's the four player for the Aggies, really clogging up the lane. And that's number three in white for Texas A&M. And you can count the bucket for Aaliyah Boston. She is not afraid to finish through contact. Well, that's where Pitts got caught inside because she stayed off of Victoria Saxon inside the double team, but you gotta go straight up. If you let Boston catch it in the paint, forget about it. That's two, you gotta close the door on number four for South Carolina. First foul called on Destiny Pitts. Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line, leads the team 77% from the charity stripe. Three point play. That's just what Aaliyah Boston does. When South Carolina, they struggled early with their offense, where do you go? To your money. That's Aaliyah Boston. Quidasha Hoppy trying to challenge her. Boston with the rebound. Oh, and Mackenzie Green almost had herself a steal. Look, Zaya Cook caught the ball. That's a shot she would normally pull the trigger and shoot. You see right away Don Staley is going to sub her out. They're going to have a conversation. And the thing that Cook is trying to really balance, what's a good and bad shot in transition there, that would have been a good shot. But she's questioning herself. She's got to catch it, be confident in rhythm, and let it go. Yeah, we saw South Carolina get off to a rocky start on Sunday against Tennessee, and they were taking some quick shots that weren't great. Against Tennessee, South Carolina shot 32%. I talked to Don Staley about it, and she said it's not a matter of shots, taking too many shots. She wants her team to take good shots and predictable shots so that they can get in position for the offensive rebound. Destiny Henderson with a great shot under the basket. By the way, South Carolina did win that game over Tennessee 67 to 53. That was their 11th ranked win of the season. They have more wins over ranked opponents than anyone. Trying to trade layups, but it won't fall for Mackenzie Green. But you see what A&M's doing? They're going straight at Aaliyah Boston because the best way to defend her is to try to get her in some foul trouble. But that's a tough thing to do because Aaliyah Boston has so much better court awareness where she is and spacing is there. Passes back out to Bree Beal. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Gamecocks. Boston, kick out to Hall. Victoria Saxton hunting down that rebound. It's the hustle plays you're going to see from Victoria Saxton. She can also jump out of this gym. I love how she creates extra possessions for South Carolina, Victoria Saxton. They'll swing it over to Bree Hall. Bree Beal, the three. Yes! Back-to-back -back games with the three, and Bree Beal not usually a huge scoring threat from outside. Don't like her shooting a three early in the shot clock, but late in the clock when the defense rotating, she's got time. That's a good shot for Bree Beal. You see Texas A&M using a lot of the shot clock, too. They don't want this to be an up-and-down game. Gary Blair said he wanted low score, and 58-54 would have been good for him. Well, right now, Gary Blair's team down by four to the number one team in the nation, the final home game of his career for Gary Blair. 
Basketball is presented by Regions, the official bank of the SEC. Well, as of tonight, there are three basketball courts named after women's basketball head coaches. Of course, the Summit at Tennessee, KL Court at NC State, and now Gary Blair Court here at Texas A&M. They dedicated the court before the game tonight. He is the all-time winningest basketball coach in A&M history on men's or women's. Well, and Gary Blair is just a white walking encyclopedia of basketball. Yeah. You can ask him about any game that happened on any event, and he would be ready to, to spat out some facts to you. You know, the fun part about Gary Blair this time of season, he can already, too, pick out which teams are going to be in the tournament. He's already, you know, figured a lot of that out as well. It was really cool to see this ceremony. They surprised him last week and told him they were going to name the court after him. They came to his house and presented him with that court that you see there. And Greg Sankey, of course, the commissioner of the SEC, he is here to see this dedication and also to see Gary Blair's final game in Reed Arena. Gary Blair is so deserving. You look at the 852 wins that he has, and he has been such a advocate for women's basketball and really helping players, helping other coaches, help expand their game, teaching constantly. Whenever you have a conversation with Gary Blair, make sure that you've got a good 45 minutes to an yeah. hour or an hour and a half, <laughs> yeah. because he's gonna take the time and spend that with him. He came over today, he gave me a, one of his books that he just had completed and written, autographed it for me. He's always sharing knowledge. Yeah, just an example of that, when the team played at Tennessee earlier this year, he made sure to take his entire team to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, because the history of the game means so much to him, and he wants his players to know it too. You have to have an appreciation for history in order to want to grow the game, and that's what Gary Blair takes such pride in. Aaliyah Boston rattles out. Speaking of history, these two teams have a little history. This game, this time last year, it was to decide the SEC regular season title, and it was Texas A&M winning it right here on what is now Gary Blair Court. And he talked about that, and he complimented Dawn and what she has done this season. His season, his team hasn't been quite the results that he would have wanted, but he totally understood why this was the matchup for his final home game. South Carolina, slow start. They started 0 for 4 from the field with two turnovers. Currently on an 8-0 run, though, and Bree Beal extends it. Look at the offense coming out of Bree Beal. She's hit a three, and now the layup. Well, an understanding that Texas A&M is going to play off of South Carolina defensively, and instead of just settling for outside shots, they're taken to the basket. But this is a team, Texas A&M, look, their guards, they can shoot the basketball. Now, Texas A&M can also shoot from outside. They're sixth in the nation in three-point percentage. Boston, her motor never stops. Constantly moving, jockeying for position on the glass. She's the fixer for South Carolina. In the discussion for the National Player of the Year, averages a double-double on the season. Her numbers actually go up against ranked opponents. Victoria Saxton sticking her long arm out in there in the passing lane and got herself to the free throw line. Aaliyah Boston already five points, two rebounds. She's working on that double-double. And look, this is a big girl that's not afraid to get down and get after it, keep her balance, and get the finish. Don Staley and the South Carolina team, they have already won at least a share of their sixth SEC regular season title. That's over the last nine seasons they've been able to accomplish those. If they win tonight, they would win the SEC outright. They've already clinched that first round, that, excuse me, that top seed in the SEC tournament next week. I can't wait for that SEC tournament. I that know. That is going to be fun. Can I say it's going to be lit? You can. Because it's going to be. Absolutely. When you look at the run, I know the Florida fell short to Vanderbilt today, but what Kelly Ray Finley has done with the Gators to have them in the top half, you look at Kim Mulkey. Hey, Rick, welcome to the SEC. Yeah. She has LSU <laughs> sitting in that number two spot right now. And Ole Miss, Ole Miss is also biting at the bit. They could finish in the top four. They could get that double bye possibly. 
Yeah, if you're one of the top four teams, if you're the top four seeds in the SEC tournament, you don't have to play until Friday. You get two days off, and that is a huge advantage. Tennessee looked really good today. Yes. Tari, Tamari Key, she really brought it inside. I don't know what Kelly Harper said to her team at halftime, but they started on an 11-0 run in that third quarter. Yeah, they scored 30 points in the third quarter. Good races. That's <laughs> Hey, you talk about punching coming out at halftime. That's exactly what the Lady Vols did. Well, South Carolina right now on a 13-2 run. Texas A&M trying to slow that down. Six seconds on the shot clock as Jordan Nixon is in the game. Did not get the start tonight. Destiny Pitts with the floater. Leticia me here on the elbow. A two from Destiny Henderson. See, that's another good shot because when the ball rotated over to Henderson, you had Aaliyah Boston that was planted down low, ready for an offensive rebound. Quidasha Hoppy will put up the shot from two. Bree Hall grabs it and runs. No good from three for Henderson. I like that three, though. A little heat check, but Destiny Henderson has been shooting the ball well from three. She's shooting 40% from the three-point line. Yeah, she leads the team with 34 made threes this season, and that ball is out of bounds despite the extra hustle from Jordan Nixon. You got Destiny Pitts that's challenging, looking to go to the basket instead of settling for the three. But then when the ball moves, Destiny Henderson gets her feet set underneath. She knows she's got rebounders. That's money for number three in black, Destiny Henderson. I know it was a little bit of a shaky start. South Carolina starting 0 for 4 from the field. But this is quicker into a rhythm for the Gamecocks than we saw at the start of the Tennessee game. Now, there was a lot of stuff going on before that came with game day and all. Absolutely. But the thing that South Carolina can do is they can morph and win whatever way they need to. It can be pretty basketball. It can be up and down, quick and fast pace, or it can be running their half court sets. High low look to Cardoso. Second chance does go for Camilla Cardoso, the transfer from Syracuse. Here's the luxury that Don Staley has is that she can go to her bench. She brings in six, seven, Camilla Cardoso and get the high low. There's no help when you have the ball in the middle of the floor. And if she misses that first shot, she's the best position to get the put back. And even more so, that's two fouls on Destiny Pitts in the yeah. first quarter. Uh, and that's what Texas A&M was hoping would be the mismatch problem because she playing the four, matched up with South Carolina's bigs, can space the four, pull them outside. And you see they sub in Sahara Jones, and it's tough to stop a fast Sanaya Rivers to the basket. Rivers has been playing really well for South Carolina. The development of this number one recruiting class that are freshmen this year, that's going to play dividends for South Carolina. Second time in the last three seasons, South Carolina has had the number one ranked recruiting class. Gamecocks on a 6-0 run. Inside to Patty, loses it. Losing time, too. And Mackenzie Green's shot won't go. South Carolina ending on a 6-0 run. What a transformation it has been since Don Staley took over this Gamecock program. We'll take a look back when we come back. Well, the Don effect in South Carolina, let's start since South Carolina joined the SEC in 91-92. They had 17 seasons before Don Staley got there. 12 SEC titles under Coach Staley, none before she took over the program. Three Final Fours, those all have come within the last six NCAA tournaments. And of course, that national title in 2017. And she has this Gamecock program looking like it's going to add a number two on that right side of the screen. This year, they are the number one team in the nation, and they just keep trending upward. Remember, when the season shut down in 2020, they were the number one team, and they were projected to be that number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament before it was canceled last year, made it to the Final Four, lost in the national semifinals to Stanford, and 
we expect to, them to be the number one seed in this year's NCAA tournament. Well, and not only has Dawn Staley brought winning to South Carolina, she's brought an excitement about women's basketball. This is a picture from last Sunday when South Carolina played against Tennessee. 18,000 fans assembled in Colonial Life Arena. Yeah, South Carolina has led the nation in attendance the last seven seasons. Look at the average attendance the season before Don took over and now compared to this season. How about a, what is it, 11,000 at least increase? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when you go to the city of Columbia, the women's basketball team is the buzz. You can't go into a restaurant or area and they want to talk about what is happening with the South Carolina Gamecocks and what the women's program is doing. South Carolina off to a strong start here, shooting 50% from the field. Going to get a second chance, too. They're one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. Sixth in offensive rebounds per game. Well, you see where South Carolina improves as the season goes along. Their offense may stutter at the beginning of the season, really finding their rhythm and where and who needs to do what. Now, as this season goes on, Teams that slow the game down, no problem for South Carolina. They still are patient in their execution. Sanaya Rivers too deep from the corner. And Texas A&M needs to get some offense going, only shooting 31% from the field. There's going to be a foul on Zaya Cook. Now for Texas A&M, having Jordan Nixon on the floor. This is a player that normally has run the point for Texas A&M. She's now to two spot. We talk about her ability to score. So we'll see how much Texas A&M will use her when they're trying to get buckets on offense. Mackenzie Green has the ball right now. She's the one running the point for Jordan Nixon. If Nixon has double figures, Texas A&M is 10 and one on the season. The problem is that's only happened once in an SEC game. For three, no. Hoppy, offensive board. Just the second offensive rebound for Texas A&M. Well, to compete with South Carolina, you got to do that. You have to create extra possessions for yourself. You can't just say, well, I got to get back in transition. Go to the glass. They get Nixon another shot, and she bounces off the back of the iron. And South Carolina is going to the free throw line. Bree Hall got herself there. Now, first 11 games of the season, Jordan Nixon had double figures in nine of those, but the last 14, just twice, she's had double figures. So she's been slowed a little bit by nagging aches and pains in that right knee. Coach Blair told me that she's gotten a couple of injections as well. She's trying to fight through her agility is not as good as it was, especially last season. We saw her play an exciting game, especially hitting that key bucket against Iowa State, the NCAA tournament. So now she's just trying to work her way back when you're battling through injury and you're trying to win a basketball team. That's tough. And Texas A&M is trying to fit a lot of new pieces together too this season. And they've tried 11 different lineups to try to figure it out. Well, they're trying to replace a center like Sierra Johnson. I mean, there, there were a lot. He had Alexis Morris, who was an electrifying guard that he had as well, that's playing her tail off down in Baton Rouge for LSU. And India Jones. Oh, man, that a tremendous. One of the best rebounders to play in the SEC. Sydney Roby, Sahara Jones back in the game for Texas A&M. Sydney Roby brings size for Texas A&M. She's going to have to get on the glass, do some rebounding for the Aggies. Bree Hall working off the screen. She's not been afraid to go to the basket. That's a freshman that's got a lot of confidence. Don Staley talked about how much she likes the way that Bree Hall is passing the basketball. 
She's been able to increase her minutes off the bench for South Carolina. You mentioned the luxury that Dawn has of the bench. How big is that going to be come tournament time specifically? Yeah, well, it's, it's huge. Well, and the experience that they've been able to get really after the first of the year, Dawn has worked them in, even gone through some pains. The offense may not be as pretty as she'd like, defensive breakdowns, but they've learned. And so now they are ready. And that's what I did. I had the South Carolina Connecticut game early in November. And that's the thing Gino said. This team can just wear you down. The fourth quarter, Connecticut was out of gas. It's going to be a foul on Camila Cardoso. Is Sydney Roby working hard to get the ball up? She'll go to the free throw line. Sydney Roby transferred in from Miami for Texas A&M. You mentioned they lost Sierra Johnson. That's a big roll down low, not just with her stat line, but also her leadership. So they've tried to find that new leader, too, on this Texas A&M team. Well, and Sydney Roby, she has got to be that post, that anchor inside that gets her work done early. And when she does that, that's when she's very effective around the rim. In this last part of February, she has really been productive for Texas A&M. And she's been coming off the bench in that role too. Well, she's got to stay out of foul trouble. And I think that's one of the reasons that Gary Blair didn't go with Roby in the starting lineup. Buy some minutes and then you can put her in and let her go to work inside. Leticia Ami here, LA. Okay, but did you see six, seven dropping dimes? I mean, like it's no, no I big deal. I <laughs> serve it up. Look, these players know each other so well. When you've got a post player, a post game, because between me here, Cardoso, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston, they can pass the basketball. They're willing passers as well. Look, check this out. Just over, showed a little dump pass. Terrific cut by a me here. That's just good work right there. Teamwork. Production. Yeah, Camilla Cardoso, it was interesting to see her transfer in, not because she was leaving Syracuse. She, Syracuse, she was the ACC co-defensive player of the year, freshman of the year, but to come to South Carolina where you have dominant post players like an Aaliyah Boston already. But when I'm watching Cardoso play, I have to remind myself, she's just a sophomore. Uh, me too. <laughs> I tried to put her out there on senior day in my right? head the other day. Definitely a sophomore. Another high-low look. Beautiful. Uh, Don Staley talks about Cordosa and tells her, look, you've only got one more year after this year to play with Aaliyah Boston. Absorb as much as you can because the future is yours in the paint for South Carolina. Sahara Jones for two. Texas A&M still struggling to find offense. They're shooting 22% from the field. Oh, she missed a me here again. But we talk about the passing of the post game for South Carolina. Cardoso again finds Leticia me here, who against the zone goes to where the defense is not. I mean, that's a smart play between those two players for South Carolina. Lily Grissett right under the basket. And Gary Blair calls a timeout. 5.54 remaining here in the second quarter, but Texas A&M has only scored three points in this quarter. But Coach Landers is exactly right. South Carolina execution in the half court has been on point. They've gone 10 minutes without a turnover. Yeah, Gary Blair had to call timeout. This is his last home game. He's retiring at the end of the season. His impact on women's basketball has been felt. There are numerous D1 head coaches that come from Gary Blair's coaching tree. Kim Mulkey, Vic Schaefer, who's now at Texas. Nell Fortner is tearing it up at Georgia Tech. Mike Neighbors with Arkansas. Aquanisha Franklin and, of course, Johnny Harris. Six active D1 head coaches have come from Gary Blair's coaching tree. And he brags about all of them, about what they've done, what they have done when they were coaching with him. 
or coaching under him of what they contributed to the success that he has had. Yeah, Steffi, you were just in Coach Blair's huddle. What were they yeah. talking about in that timeout? Yeah, you know, Courtney, he was just frustrated with the fact that there were the high lows were really un they weren't guarded, and so his team just lacking the physicality to match some of that for South Carolina. So challenging his team in that regard, and also offensively, just making plays harder than they have to be, spinning away from the basket. So look for them to maybe make things more simple here after the after that media timeout. Well, the first thing, Steffi, when you're defending the high low, you cannot allow the ball to come to the middle of the floor. And then offensively, right on point, Q Hoppy taking an easy shot, not spinning away, not forcing things. But when you're open, pull the trigger and knock it down. Hoppy with five points. She averages 10 on the season. Liked this shot in the corner. Oh, it's, it's real simple. When you just move the basketball, get your feet set. If Zaya Cook's not going to pressure you, yes, pull the trigger and knock it down. Sydney Roby just picked up her second foul for Texas A&M. We had talked about how she does struggle with foul trouble at some times. They thought bringing her off the bench has really helped alleviate some of that. She's still on the floor, though, for A&M as South Carolina brings in its starters plus Lily Grissett. We've got to leave Roby in the game because she is the physical size inside for Texas A&M. And again, Victoria Saxton untouched. Getting the ball to the post, that has been something that South Carolina has perfected. They have gotten so much better at knowing when and where to get the ball to the post players. And they have numerous options to do that. That's an understatement. Yeah. It's a tough off-balance shot by Mackenzie Green. Sydney Roby threw a second look back up. Paint points for South Carolina, 20 of their 29 have come in the paint. Make that 31. And it's not just the post, the guards, the quickness of Destiny Henderson. When she turns on the Jets, man, if she gets just a second ahead of you, forget about it. Are you talking about Henny and the Jets? Henny! I love it. You watch how she gets by Green and she protects the basketball, able to get the ball up over the defense and get the finish. And I remember watching Destiny Henderson last season. That was her real first season as the starting point guard. She's in her second season taking over that role. Sometimes she would drive too far down. Right. And really hurt South Carolina's offense. And what an adjustment she's made. Well, let me tell you, Destiny Henderson has adjusted her whole career you know, she came in in that number one recruiting class. Okay, Aaliyah Boston. But when Henny came in, she was playing to get behind Ty Harris. Then her sophomore season, she also had to come off the bench. So it wasn't until her junior year she took the reins, and now as being the starting point guard in her junior and senior year, she is that point guard Don Staley already knew she could be. Destiny Henderson, six points in this one, three of four from the field. Kayla Wells is at the free throw line for Texas A&M right now. Wells is their leading scorer, but she's got two points. Wells is the all-time leading three-point field goal shooter here at Texas A&M, but she hasn't gotten too many looks from the three-point line today. Yeah, just one shot from deep. You know, go back and talking about T Destiny Henderson, uh, Steffi, and I were talking to Don earlier and talking about how do you manage all of that talent? You got 16 players sitting over there. And she said before the season started in November, she had a Zoom, not just with the players, but also with their parents and explaining to them, look, your daughter's not going to play as many minutes as, they, as she may not may like to because they have so much talent. And it was Destiny Henderson's mother that spoke up and said, yep, and you just have to stay with the process. And the players have bought in. And when you hear it from another parent, I mean, and you look at Lily Grissett just finished there. She's a player, a senior, that had to come off the bench. She's fought through some injuries, but has stayed with the plan of Don Staley looking to go after another championship. There's a travel called on MJ Johnson of Texas A&M.
Yeah, Coach, I was talking to Destiny today at Shoot Around. You know, she was telling me that, you know, the first two years were really tough. I mean, she was one of the best players coming in. She had to wait her turn. But I asked her, what got you through that? She actually said me. She, I didn't allow distractions. I stayed the course. I listened to Don Staley. I did what she asked me. I knew that my time would come. I just had to be patient. Boy, has that paid off for Don Staley That's and Destiny Lee Henderson. Lee oh, there's a great bucket by Lily Grissett. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Destiny Henderson, with the transfer portal these days, I mean, you could choose to go anywhere. But when you want to win, you've got to stay long enough, get that experience, build the chemistry. That's a good finish by Roby inside. Look at the composure of Alia Boston. And I think they called that on Sydney Roby. Yes, that's going to be her third foul. Boston always going to the glass, keeps working after the pass inside, doesn't just stand and watch, but she tries to come position inside to go after the glass. Ooh, that's a lot of contact from Sydney Roby. That's why Texas A&M liked her in there, because she is that more physical player inside, but she'll take a seat as Boston hits the first free throw. Roby with three fouls. Well, now te Texas A&M having to rely on a freshman, Jaden Malone, with the assignment of trying to defend Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston up to nine points, four rebounds. She's trying to set a new SEC record with 20 straight double-doubles tonight. MJ Johnson just short on the bucket underneath. Well, that's the key. Going against South Carolina, use a little shot fake because this is a team that loves to block some shots. They're going to be flying in the air every time they think you're going to score. 14, MJ Johnson to the line. Can we watch an MJ Johnson at shoot around today? This young lady can't stop dancing. She has yeah. a constant <laughs> disco going on in her head. She's got tremendous energy on the court. Gets one of two. Under two minutes to go in the half. South Carolina has hit eight of its last nine shots. Lily Grissett cutting to the basket. And gets fouled. And did you see he was there for the offensive rebound again? Victoria Saxton. That's just her role. She knows it and she owns it. And I asked her, I said, Victoria, where do you get that energy from or that want to? She said, it comes from my heart. And I thought, that, that's a great, she just loves to do that. And I was said, well, you know, did you get it from your mom or your dad? Because they both played basketball in college. Her mom played at Alabama. She was on that 1994 team that went to the Final Four. And then her dad also played at UCF. And she said, you know, her mom first got her into basketball at the age of eight. And she said, Carolyn, I hated it. <laughs> she said I wasn't. What? She said I wasn't real good at it. I threw it over the backboard and all, but I stuck with it. Now she loves it. Do you see Bree Beal with the block? That's defense right there. That's defense. You know, all these players for South Carolina accepted their roles. You've got Victoria Saxon as cleanup on the glass. A lot of times, Bree Beal. Look at who she's guarding. Q Hoppy. That's the best score for for Texas A&M. Jada Malone under the basket, rebound by Victoria Saxton. Yeah, the primary player that Brie Beal guards on the season averages about three points less than their season average when they face South Carolina, guarded by Brie Beal. Jordan Nixon all the way through, drops it in. First points for Nixon. Like when Nixon just plays straight up New York basketball, that's when she's most effective. Not thinking too much, just let the game happen. South Carolina has outscored Texas A&M 21 to 11 here in the second quarter. Back to Bree Beal. Jones with the board.
A quick shots now from Texas A&M. Looks to, oh, Henny, don't do him like that. Woo, between the legs. Getting fancy, Destiny Henderson. Texas A&M can take the last shot of the half. They have struggled offensively, shooting 24% from the field. We talk so much about South Carolina's offense. Their defense causes a lot of teams a lot of problems. Five seconds. Nixon trying to create space with the step back for two. But Texas A&M with a little life, they hit the last second bucket. How about the fancy moves from Destiny Henderson though? Look, look at this, between the legs, the crossover in the middle of the floor for the finish. Number three, Destiny, Henny, shake and bake. Woo, don't hurt him like that. South Carolina head coach Don Staley is standing by with Steffi. Don, let's start with your defense. You hold Texas A&M to 21 points. What worked for y'all? I mean, I think everything worked for us. I thought the people that we put in the game just elevated us to another level. Um, I mean, we practiced that way, so I'm not surprised. But I'm happy that the shots are going in, and we packed our defense. What did you like out of that second rotation when they were able to come into the game? I, I like the fact that they were really poised. I mean, this is this is a, a big game on the road. Um, they were poised offensively. They let the game come to them. And everybody felt like they were a part of our offense and our defense, and that's what you want, especially when you've, you've sat over there and you want to play extended minutes. That's how you play extended minutes. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Courtney. South Carolina up at the half, 42 to 21, shooting 53% from the field. Let's get you back to the studio with Drea and Coach Landers. One last home game for Gary Blair. He'll retire at the end of the season, and he's hosting the number one team in the nation. But it was a very exciting pregame ceremony coming out for the very first, for the very last time. But the court now bears his name, and it will moving forward. Gary Blair Court inside Reed Arena, a perfect fitting for the all-time winningest coach in men's or women's basketball here at Texas A&M. Halftime getting set for the start of the third quarter. Courtney Lyle alongside Carolyn Peck, Steffi Sorensen also with us. South Carolina leading big 42 to 21 and just doing South Carolina things like getting the ball inside. Well, their patience offensively has been so impressive and they've been able to move the ball and get the ball to the middle of the floor. That's been the soft spot against that defense of Texas A&M. And when that happens, they've been able to get the ball down the lane and in the cup, the high-low pass has worked so well. When you've got post players that can pass the ball to each other, that helps. And then you've got the speed of Destiny Henderson that's getting paint points, nibbling a bit for the guards as well for South Carolina. Now we're also watching history. Aaliyah Boston has 19 straight double-doubles. 20 would set a new SEC record. She has 9 points, 5 rebounds, still 20 minutes to play for Aaliyah Boston. Well, and get this, Courtney, South Carolina has gone 17 minutes without a turnover in this ball game. Wow. That's a way to start the third quarter. South Carolina is also shooting 53% from the field. A big improvement from the 32% from the field they shot against Tennessee on Sunday. Bree Beal with the rebound gets out of the double team. I like the shot selection of South Carolina today. It's much better than it was on Sunday against Tennessee. Swatted away by Aaliyah Patty, and Steffi Sorensen was, uh, got up to catch up with Gary Blair out of the halftime locker room. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. Yeah, sorry, well, hey, gracefully. You know what? It's all good, girl. So <laughs> Gary Blair was, is going to be pleased at least with the block, but you know he, he was frustrated with them not giving up plays like this, right? Just the physicality, their help side is late. Look for Texas A&M to pack the paint. But he said, I'm worried about our offense. I want to score. Well, and that's true. And one of the things, how easily South Carolina scored in the paint after Gary Blair had told us they were going to pack the paint. So 
when you're defending the passer, you're, you have to make a decision. Are you going to be down low and take away the receiver, or are you going to put pressure on the passer? And I think the defense for AM was getting caught in the middle. Yeah, South Carolina able to have 28 paint points in the first half. They now have 30. South Carolina also had 11 assists. Sharing the basketball is key for South Carolina. Three seconds on the shot clock for Destiny Pitts. Rebound by Aaliyah Boston, her sixth rebound tonight. Zaya Cook for three. But I like that shot, it was in rhythm. Yeah. Kayla Wells, that's just her second made bucket. She leads Texas A&M, averaging 17 points a game. You know, the best way to score against South Carolina, score before they can get their defense set. Boston will pass it off to Beal. Ten seconds on the shot clock. A three-second violation called on South Carolina. Three-second violation called against the Gamecocks. It's Maggie That's just their third turnover tonight. I think that either caught Boston or Saxton inside when Bree Beal went to go make her move. So we saw Kayla Wells score a moment ago. You try to get her going again? Well, absolutely, and you've got to be able to run off. If you can force turnovers or off shots, if, if A&M can rebound to get out and run in transition. Boston back out to Zaya Cook. Rebound to Leah Boston. Henny to the rack. It was Q Hoppy driving in. Gary Blair wanted a foul called. And Leah Boston getting an offensive rebound and then the kick out. Henny, as the defense is trying to recover, she's so quick recognizing the closeout gets all the way to the rack. Coach Blair dialing up some pressure here. Cook weaves through it. Held ball, possession arrow pointing to Texas A&M. Yeah, Gary Blair's got to start, has got to change the tempo of this game. If he wants to get A&M back in the game, if they can score, get their full court pressure set, try to possibly turn South Carolina over. Right now, they're going to try to have to work in the half court. Kayla Wells way off the mark on the three. It's been a tough night for Wells. You know, we've seen her dealing with a little bit of an ankle issue over the last couple of games as well. That's made it hard on her. Well, she only had three shot attempts in that first half. She's got to be more involved in the offense for AM. Coach Peck, you were talking about Kayla Wells not having a really productive night. Remember Victoria Saxton starting on her and just her maturation as a player. You know, she draws difficult matchups at that four position. A year ago, Don Staley would have to bring her side. Look, this is going to be a tough matchup. But this season, Coach Staley says, V, you got to guard Kayla Wells. She goes, Coach, I got it. No problem. Yeah, and it is phenomenal to watch Victoria Saxton defend all over the floor. You know, a lot of teams in the college games trying to run ball screen action. Well, when Victoria Saxon jumps out on a hard hedge or she can even switch on guards, that really shuts your, deep, your offense down. I love how Don Staley describes Victoria Saxon. High performance, low maintenance. She goes out and does her job and knows her role and owns it. I asked her, I said, the key to your success, it seems like to me, and before I could finish my question, she said, Victoria Saxton. She said, I knew who you were going to talk about because Saxton just does all the little things. We talked about her offensive rebounding. We haven't even talked about her ability to block shots. You know, the defense, her ability to defend, 
in the paint and away away from the on the perimeter as well. Saxon with three points, four rebounds, four assists tonight. It's all the little things that you, you don't expect from her, but when you look at, okay, this is what we needed, boom. You look down, the, yep, Victoria Saxon gave us that. Aaliyah Boston did just pick up her first foul, and it puts Aaliyah Patty at the free throw line for Texas A&M. KK Green and Ernie e. Kindred in the game for the Aggies. I'd expect Texas A&M again bring some full court pressure. And here comes that pressure. Can they turn South Carolina over? It's been hard to do, only three turnovers by the Gamecocks tonight. Well, South Carolina has seen just about every possible defense you could possibly throw at them, so the composure is there. And Destiny Henderson, cool, calm, and collected. She never changes expression either. It's like stone face. Take her to play some poker. We could probably bluff yep. some people. <laughs> I remember uh, Coach Staley was talking to us earlier in the season about how they wanted to make sure they ruffled Henny's fe feathers. She would get on her. Obviously, she gets on her point guard more than other players, but because she wanted her in any moment, no matter the pressure situation, to be able to handle it, and she does. Well, that's what you, you practice for, so when you're prepared for whatever situation may present itself, and Henny, look, she thrives on it. Do we count that as a pass you by read Zaya my mind. Cook? You read my <laughs> mind. Absolutely give Zaya Cook an assist on that one. Brie Beal on the bucket. South Carolina's defense making Texas A&M work hard for their offense. Gamecocks with a sizable lead here in the third quarter. Hey, when we come back, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey will join us. We're talking the SEC Tournament, South Carolina, Gary Blair, and more. All right. Guess what? This time next week, we will be in Nashville for the second day of the SEC Tournament. Now, if the season were have to have ended before tonight's games, this is how the bracket would look up, would look. Of course, everybody vying for those top four seeds in the SEC tournament because that means you get the double buy. But guess what? Talking SEC tournament, and we are talking with the commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey, is joining us. Thank you so much for your time. And, I mean, what a great environment for Gary Blair for the number one team in the nation. But let's talk SEC tournament first because there was some big news coming out about the future of where we're going to be, and we're going back to Greenville. We're in Nashville this year. We'll go back to Greenville for three years. We've enjoyed that community. It's, it's really an amazing community. I think we were first there in two. 2005 and the whole city's transformed a lot of enthusiasm and great host for our women's basketball student athletes so before we go to greenville we're in nashville and what do you think about how competitive the women's conference as a whole has been this season so sunday i was with you in in uh, columbia a big day there and then i went home and watched uh florida at lsu game which uh just great to see those two programs rise up the way they have Tennessee's traditional power, uh, what Yo's done at Ole Miss. You know, you're here with what Gary's built. You know what Mississippi State can do. Uh, just like we do in every other sport, we have this incredible competition, which is both challenging and rewarding. All right, so the big debate, Commissioner, is who is National Player of the Year? In your mind, oh. what do you think? She just made a three. I mean. <laughs> in fact, we were sitting behind the bench, and she, she shot a baseline two. And he's like, was that a three? I don't think if Don, I'm not sure if Don's let her shoot three. So we've answered that question. Oh, yeah, that's her 13th three of the season. Yeah, just to watch Leah and the way she's developed has been fun. Um, and part of the reward is over time you get to see these great people who are part of a program, part of a community, who grow up literally in college. And you've watched that with her as a player. Well, and you look at the talent that Don Staley has brought to South Carolina, the attendance over the last seven years. I mean, that's growing across the SEC as well. 
Yeah, I was trying to think of who was talking on uh, uh, on game day about having been there when it wasn't that way. I can remember um, going to some South Carolina women's basketball games in the early mid 2000s, and we're talking hundreds. And to be there with a full house, which is not the first time I've been there with a full house, and to know what Don did to build that program. And we were talking about what Gary did when he arrived here in College Station to, to rebuild the enthusiasm. And it again, it's encouraging. The, the scene in Baton Rouge Sunday with a full house at, at the PMAC and what Kim's brought from an enthusiasm standpoint. To see that over and over and over in this league is a tribute to the passion, but a tribute to the, the quality of women's basketball competition. Aaliyah Boston with two more points. She's up to 14 points, eight rebounds. But I want to go back to Gary Blair. There was a special ceremony before this game. They named the court after him. He's the all-time winningest basketball coach at Texas A&M, men's or women's. And when we talk to people, it's about how much he teaches the game, the history of the game, and the importance that the game is to him. And he wants that conveyed to others. So the first time I met Gary, Gary's probably the longest coach now with, uh, that I've known. So I was an intern at Northwestern State University in Natchitoches, Louisiana, and he brought uh, the Lady Jacks, as they would have been known, but from Stephen F. Austin. They were a nationally ranked top 10 program that he built in Nacogdoches. Um, and then fast forward 30 years ago, this month, I'm driving to Nacogdoches. They put me in charge of the Southland Conference Women's Basketball Tournament on the administrator. He calls me and wants me to explain why you can only have two women's basketball players from Stephen F. Austin at the Southland Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. I'm like, there's just a rule, coach. That's, yeah. that's why. <laughs> like, I didn't know. And he was not giving up. That's an hour of my life that day. I'll never get back. But that's an indication of who he is because he cares. He, he said, I'm just, we're trying to build women's basketball. That's literally who he is. He built into that community. He's built in, when he was at Fayetteville, he built into the Arkansas community. And he's done it here for the longest ever. Yeah, it took Arkansas to a Final Four and then, of yeah. course, took this Texas A&M program to a Final Four and a national championship. You know, during this game today, I get a text from Sanja Hogue. She gave Gary Blair his first college coaching job at Louisiana yeah. Tech, hired him away from uh, South Oak Cliff High School, and they were recruiting who others, whose sister? Dennis Rodman. Oh, De yeah, yeah Deborah Rodman to come play at Louisiana Tech. Well, you know, and Gary benefited me, and it, it's a sad moment. So Sue Donahoe, who led women's basketball, and we lost her last fall. But Sue worked for me as an associate commissioner in the Southland Conference, and she would tell me Gary Blair stories like eating Cheetos and wiping his fingers, <laughs> his orange fingers, on the side of the, like, dealer loaner car um, on, on these long recruiting trips. And, and, and drinking those Diet Cokes. That's exactly right. <laughs> so uh, I'm in charge of that tournament in Nacogdoches, Texas. He's playing Northwestern State. I was a young administrator. I sat right at the squares table by his bench, which I learned you don't do. He walks over to me after a, what he thought was a bad call. I'm like, oh, no, here we go. He takes a sip of the Diet Coke. And this is 30 years ago. I still remember. He says, those boys from Tyler, the two officials were from Tyler. He says, they're just too worried about being fair today. <laughs> I don't know what the answer to that one is. And those are the things that, that, I mean, literally 30 years ago, I can remember those stories of that phone call and that. They're trying to be too fair today. And he knows all the officials' names. Yep. Oh, yeah. He, he gets to know everybody involved in women's basketball. Well, it's about growing the game for him, and we've seen that for sure. It, you know, it's such a special day, this environment, to see these fans come out for him. But going back to the SEC tournament, uh, just the talent that we've seen, what are you most looking forward to next week in Nashville? Well, you know, last, two years ago we were in Nashville and stopped the men's tournament. So right. I, I will never again not appreciate those moments and so the competition um, you know Missouri had a win over South Carolina to open the season and it's a reminder that everybody has to show up and play um, again you've seen these programs rise I think of, of LSU Florida the, the rebirth of reemergence of Tennessee under Kelly uh, and, and down through the roster the competition is going to be outstanding and guys we just saw history Aaliyah Boston now has her 20th straight double-double. That is a new SEC record. Sylvia Fowles had the previous record with 19 straight double-doubles, and there's 20. As you said, what a player she has become over her time at South Carolina. Of course, really got in the weight room, took control of her diet this year, and then improved her all-around game even more than it already was. 
Yeah, and I, you could see that just on TV and, and to see her in person twice. Um, it, it shows her footwork, actually, is what you notice. And I'm not a technician in basketball, but her speed and movement is well, what leads to those 20 double-doubles. You saw how dominant Sylvia Fowles was when she played at LSU, and now for Aaliyah Boston, they have broken her record. When she tied the record of Sylvia Fowles, Aaliyah Boston told me that Sylvia posted it on her Instagram story to congratulate her. So former players in the SEC, they're following this young woman's career. She also always looks like she's having fun. Absolutely. Yeah. And we forget that, you know, and all the discussions about name, image, and likeness and transfer portal and, and uh, you know, COVID requirements and conference movement. It's fun. And I have appreciated watching her have fun. A lot of people do, but uh, Aaliyah shows it uh, on a regular basis. So Aaliyah Boston takes a seat today with 18 points, 10 rebounds, getting that 20th consecutive double-double, her 21st of the season, but those 20 straights set a new SEC record. You look at the conference as a whole, SEC women sitting on top, ranked number one in the country. You have Auburn, that is one of the top picks to win a national championship. I mean, what does that say about the SEC? Well, it's a commitment across the board to excellence, and we talk about meeting the SEC standard of excellence. So for our staff, we have to perform like national champions because that's the expectation for our teams. And there was a time, I haven't checked the net, the NCAA's net recently, all 14 of our teams are in the top 100, so we're at or close to that still. That's pretty remarkable, and we've pretty consistently this year led with you know top 25 teams, top 50 teams. The same things happened on the men's side. And in my first year as commissioner, we only had three teams in the NCAA tournament, and that was like a really bad selection Sunday. And uh, the commitment to coaches, the commitment to facilities, uh, the commitment to enthusiasm and support that you see um, plays out uh, on the court and, and in those selection Sundays being a little bit more friendly to us than, than just three. But it happens in baseball, it happens in softball. We won nine national championships last year and, and a really difficult year. And that's a tribute to the young people who had to go through COVID testing and disruption and rescheduling. We've had a little bit of that this year, but pretty remarkable achievements. Yeah, and it looks like South Carolina could definitely be on track to add a national championship this season. This basketball program has been dominant they are number one. They have been for 16 straight weeks. And right now, Charlie Cream, our bracketologist, is projecting on the women's side, of course, that the SEC would have nine teams in the field. I'm going to call Charlie and ask to bump that to 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows with, with, with what happens at the SEC tournament next week? I mean, it's going to be so competitive that that could really help boost some teams' resumes. Well, Carolyn, you asked me about our, our men's basketball side. So when we had those three teams selected, we didn't have enough. Uh, now it's quad one teams. It was top 50 then. We've not had that in women's basketball. The ability to play and beat high-quality teams and improve your postseason opportunities or seeding has always been there. And that's, that's what happens when you have nine teams you know, predicted to be in or 14 in the top 100. You can, every time you can compete, you can build your resume uh, within the conference. And, and that's a hallmark for the Southeastern Conference. Well, and a lot of the, don't you think a lot of the teams in the SEC, in the non-conference, they even boosted up that yeah. non-conference schedule that really has helped them be in this position to be considered. Uh, absolutely. And the, the list of like uh, ranked teams that Dawn's beat and, and, you know, I appreciate both Ole Miss and South Carolina. We reconfigured that UConn game, which I know is a big deal for women's basketball community, but we're going to finish our schedule completely. That's that's a need for us. Awesome. Commissioner Sankey, thank you so much for your time. We will see you in Nashville. Absolutely. Aaliyah Boston with history, 20 consecutive double-doubles, a new SEC record, and she gets it tonight. History for Aaliyah Boston, 18 points, 10 rebounds. That gives her her 20th straight double-double, passing Sylvia Fowles for a new SEC record. I mean, it just feels really good. Sylvia Fowles is a, a dominant post player, um, and so for me to be right there with her is just is just a great feeling because I've watched her play and see what she does and how strong she is and just want to do that.
Honestly, I'm just excited as the fans. You know, the fans, when it's at nine points, nine rebounds, as soon as she gets that one, it's just like everybody goes crazy. And I'm over there doing the same thing, just matching the energy. It's, it's fun to watch because that's something I was doing in high school. So it's just like watching someone do it at this level, it's just like, wow, it's like, it's amazing that you do that consistently every game. You should honestly I mean, be more I proud. Mean, you should, proud. yeah. Like you can I'm be fine. humble, but you can I'm smile fine. about it. I mean, uh. You know, guys, I have to agree with Sanaya. We got, I'm waiting for Aaliyah to get hype or, you know, to celebrate because think about the excellence and the consistency with which she performs. She is so selfless. But I have to say, if you follow her on social media, she is gassing everybody up but herself. So it is in line with her personality. <laughs> Well, I tell you too, though, I can, I can imagine Aaliyah Boston doesn't get too hype about it because she stays hungry. She's always looking for ways to get her game, take her game to another level. What do you think the biggest transformation? I mean, we talked about getting in shape, but Commissioner Sankey mentioned her footwork. Like, what is it technically about her, the biggest growth that you've seen this year? Well, I think that when you, you change your body, you're quicker. And then she has the, the balance and court awareness. She spent the summer, she had went five days down with, with Tim Duncan, who's one of the best at really being very patient and composed on the court. And he, I talked to him about what he worked on with Aaliyah Boston, and he said, court awareness where you are on the court and to understand you're the best player on the court you're going to attract a lot of attention so now what do you do when you attract that attention how do you counter that and i think that composure that she has on the court has really helped her take her game to another level leticia a me here with more paint points for south carolina now 42 of their 71 points have come in the paint. And it was fun to see in that clip that was the post game after the Tennessee win when she tied the record of Sylvia Fowles. To see Sanaya Rivers, the freshman up there with her, and the admiration, I mean, to have a player like that, it's going to feed into this upcoming class that are freshmen now. Well, and I think that Aaliyah takes a lot of pride in being a leader and setting the example for the younger players. So that just helps her continue to want to get better to show them the way. Texas A&M calls timeout. South Carolina up 73 to 31. I thought that was uh, unusual, but it is totally his personality. We had many fun laughs about Coach Blair, and I probably shouldn't tell them, so I'll keep those to myself. He's always competitive. <laughs> He's competitive every day. Gary Blair, step up on the road. Give our fans fresh candy, please. Thank you. I did it the right way. I did it the Aggie way. Look, there's nothing like doing a game here in Reed Arena and the pregame when Coach Blair walks around throwing out candy. I have been hit in the head numerous times, and I'm happy to have it every time. You're supposed to catch it. Well, if it's thrown from behind me and I can't see it gotcha. coming, yeah. that makes it difficult. But, I mean, look at his resume. It speaks for itself. Yeah, over 850 wins, going to the Elite Eight, winning the national championship. But what I love most about covering Texas A&M is coming to shoot around. Gary Blair, at the beginning of shoot around, covers the offense. And that takes maybe 20 to 30 minutes. The rest of the time he comes over and sits with us. We don't even get to see what they're gonna cover defensively because Gary Blair has so much knowledge. He's dropping and telling stories to us sitting over here during that practice. And I'm really gonna miss that time. Well, guys, I reached out to both Mike Neighbors and Vic Schaefer, two of his former assistants, and Mike Neighbors had a great story for me. And he said it's always been about the people for Gary. One of his best memories was buying a ticket as a young high school coach to head out west for an AU tournament to find a hotel where coaches were staying, and one of them was Gary Blair. He said no one could work a hotel lobby like Gary Blair. He said name one, and he said nobody can do it like Gary Blair. And then talking with Vic Schaefer. He talked in 1998. He was at Arkansas. They were a nine seed. They finished six in the SEC. 
Vic Schaefer going on and on, right? <laughs> Got to play against Tennessee again in the Final Four. And they're getting beat. They're getting killed in the Final Four. Down by 20 in the fourth quarter. Two minutes left. Gary calls a timeout. Vic Schaefer goes, Coach, I want to get out of here. He goes, I'm coaching until the last play. Those are the two memories both of those coaches let left with me and it's so it, it just speaks to Gary Blair and his impact on both of them. Uh, Vic Schaefer told me that same story and he said you know he learned from that because even if you're getting beat you can cut you can still coach you can teach and there's something that your kids can take from that. Yeah talking and shoot around those are going to be some great memories you learn so much about the game about how coach Blair sees the game. He also might get a Yellowstone reference or a Chicago Fire or PD. He's big big fans of those shows. He also watches The Bachelor. I don't remember him talking about oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I missed that conversation. He's very diverse. You might say Gary Blair's the Renaissance man. Oh yeah. Gary Blair's final home game of his career, 19 seasons at Texas A&M. He has been coaching for 50 years, and it started as a high school golf coach. Yeah. <laughs> he tells stories of the different coaching experiences that he had. He said it was at Louisiana Tech. He was on. He coached the uh, assistant on the basketball team, and then he also he coached the softball team there yes, as well. Yes, he did. Any opportunity that Gary Blair has had to teach young people, he has jumped at the chance. And obviously this isn't the way that, you know, he wanted his last season to go. Texas A&M has struggled this year. They're 4-10 and ten in SEC play, but we've covered them quite a bit, and he is constantly going back through film. What can we do better? What tweaks can we make? And that's... Part of the D, it, part of his DNA as a coach, it's what got them a national championship in 2011. Well, when he came here to Texas A&M, his alma mater, that was his goal, was to bring a championship, and he just did it the right way, just chipping away, getting better each year till he was able to win that championship in 2011. Yeah, and that run in 2011, it was impressive. Look at the notable coaches that he defeated to make their way to Texas A&M's first national championship. So it was no easy street no. to get to the top of that ladder to cut down nets for Texas A&M. And I remember being in Indianapolis, and nobody really gave Texas A&M a chance against Stanford. They pulled off that win, and then they were like, well, there's no way. He's beat Notre Dame, and then he did that too. And he is the oldest man, the oldest coach to have won a national championship. He was 65 years old. Still going strong, coach. And his name hanging a couple of times up here in the rafters at Rita Rita, and of course will be on the court. Gary Blair Court, newly named at the beginning of tonight's game. When they have a new coach, I'm sure Gary Blair will be here in the stands. I'm going to come down to College Station just to sit in the stands with him and kind of pick his brain as he watches the game unfold. That sounds like an SEC Network TV show in the making. And, and Gary Blair is going to have to take me to his favorite hamburger joint. Oh, yeah, we've been hearing about it. I don't remember the name of it now. Now, this has been a tough battle for Coach Blair's last home game. You have the number one team in the nation in South Carolina coming in. They've only lost one game on the season. That was to Missouri at the start of SEC play. And since that loss, South Carolina has trended upward. You know, it's really hard to go undefeated. And Don Staley tells, talks about all the time. After a loss, the players' ears get a little bit more open. Their eyes, they pay more, more focused attention. And they have improved since that loss to Missouri. No team is better tested than South Carolina either. They have 11 wins over ranked opponents. They're 11-0 and against ranked opponents. And recently they've had chances to get that depth that we've talked about so many times, extra minutes, like in this ballgame. That freshman class, number one recruiting class. She has two of them. 
Oh, that's a turnover, Don Staley's going to reference. We'll step aside under five minutes to go. South Carolina leading 77 to 39. SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regents, the official bank of the SEC. Well, we mentioned the 11 ranked wins that South Carolina has. Well, they have five wins over top 10 teams. They defeated Maryland, and then Stanford was their most recent top 10 win back on December 21st. And, of course, that one felt a little extra special because it was Stanford who defeated them in the Final Four last season. Stanford, of course, went on to win the national championship. They trailed by 18 points in that game against the Cardinal and came back to win. If this doesn't make a statement, I don't know what will. Their margin of victory against ranked opponents, they're beating them by an average of 13 and a half points. Well, they've also dominated on the glass. They've dominated points in the paint as well. And the depth that this team has, we were talking about before the break, the freshman class that's the number one recruiting class that's playing this year, they've been able to come in and contribute. So South Carolina, you know, it's potential that they could be on a collision course. Could they possibly meet Stanford again down the road in this NCAA tournament? Oh, a little drama. You know the committee would love that. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Grissett underneath the basket for Carolina. And it's been a history-making night once again for the Gamecocks. Aaliyah Boston, 18 points, 10 rebounds. Her 20th straight double-double. That sets a new record in the SEC. The previous was 19 straight by Sylvia Fowles. So now South Carolina has one more game left on the schedule. Play oh. Ole Miss. Yeah, on Sunday. So then it's on to the SEC tournament. I'm looking so forward to Nashville. That's going to be fun. And I'll tell you, get your tickets because starting on Wednesday, they're going to be exciting games. Yeah, we, we've already seen upsets in the regular season so many times. The bottom of the SEC really took a step up this year, and it's made it dangerous for any team. I mean, look at Auburn and their two wins. It's Georgia and Tennessee, is it not? Yeah, they, absolutely yeah. it is, yeah. And the SEC. Vanderbilt was able to knock off Florida tonight, 63-59. to Florida's been vying for a top-four seed in the SEC tournament. Well, Commissioner Greg Sankey talked about the net of the women all in the top 100. Well, that is led by South Carolina. You look at that, their net is one. That's the top in the country. Their strength of schedule, number one. They have gone out and played the toughest schedule possible, and they have been successful. You know, the one thing that Gary Blair talked about to us today is the SEC tournament. It's gonna be a new start for him, he's never started on Wednesday in the SEC tournament. But Gary Blair does know how to advance in the tournament. So he can have a good run once this team gets to Nashville. And yeah, Nia Russell with the bucket. South Carolina right now not projected in the NCAA tournament field. Or excuse me, Texas A&M not projected in the NCAA tournament field at four and 10 in SEC play. They're 14 and 12 overall. We've talked about so many things that make Gary Blair great, and there's there's little superstitions. You'll notice on his hand he has a, a black cross. It's a positive sign. It's a reminder to stay positive during games. He draws that on his hand. He carries some $2 bills in his billfold to change them out at the bank when they lose, and there's a coin that he carries in his pocket. Well, and he makes sure that because he, he he makes sure that he has he follow he's a little superstitious, and so he has all of his little lucky trinkets to carry along with him for each ball game.
Three minutes to go. South Carolina with a 40-point lead. And South Carolina's done what they have needed to do coming you know, off the big, exciting win over Tennessee to bring that show on the road. And really, don't come in and, and let your game look ugly. You've got to be playing on point as you're rolling on now toward postseason. And I'd say they are on point right now. 54% from the field, four turnovers tonight. Taking care of the basketball. You said four turnovers. Four turnovers. Their season low is seven. Sonia Fagan is at the free throw line right now for Carolina. Misses the first. Want to remind you, SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions, the official bank of the SEC. We'll see the SEC go on the road. The show on the road in Nashville next week. You can see SEC tournament coverage starting on Wednesday here on the SEC Network. We got you all the way through the championship a week from Sunday on our ESPN Family Networks. Destiny Pitts for three. Pitts can shoot it now. If she just gets the opportunity, she's had to play a bit out of position, going at the four spot, but man, when she finds daylight, she is on the money. Yeah, that's gonna be an offensive foul on Destiny Littleton. She displaced Jordan Nixon. I think you almost made this call before the officials had the time you see to me throw my arm out. <laughs> you did. Yeah. <laughs> we got Courtney Lyle, Ooh. official Courtney Lyle over here calling that one. Yes, the extension of the arm, that's an offensive foul. You know, Gary Blair, yeah, every time he, he would get checked up talking about this season and coming to an end. He's loved this place and the fans, he talks so much about the fan support here that they have been a big part of the success of this program. Yeah, and it's gonna be interesting to see who will follow Gary Blair. It's gonna be tough shoes to fill. They have not named a successor to Coach Blair. And I mean, there's such a loyal fan base here. He has had so much success uh, and a program that has a lot of resources too. I mean, this is an excellent job for the next whoever it is to lead the Aggies. You know, there's an Aggie alum that's not too far down the road that I think a lot of fans would be excited about. I'm just saying. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Gary Are you talking Blair. talking about Vic Schaefer? Yeah, v Gary Blair's an alum. Vic Schaefer is an Ooh, alum. Carolyn. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there of who's got ties to Texas a and I mean, I, if I'm an AD, I'd think about it. Well, Vic Schaefer's had success. He's in his second season at Texas a and or excuse me, at Texas. He took him to the Elite Eight last year, and then, of course, a couple of national championship game appearances at Mississippi State before that. No, well, I mean, you've got Kelly Bond, who's been here for years with Gary Blair sitting on the bench. She would be another candidate to take a look at as well. I mean, these are big shoes to fill yeah. anybody that follows Gary Blair. There's Ross Bjork, the athletic director at Texas A&M. Greg Sankey behind him. Everybody, so many friends and family came in to celebrate this last night. Gary Blair's final home game here at Reed Arena. Yeah, he told us his, his daughter is here sitting right behind us. His son, I don't believe, was able to make it uh, because of an illness in his family. But he was, you know, very excited to be able to share this opportunity with as many friends and family as possible. One minute remaining. One minute. One minute to go in this ball game, and we have seen the number one team in the nation look like the number one team tonight. South Carolina has shot 53% from the field. We saw history with Aaliyah Boston getting her 20th consecutive double-double, a new SEC record.
South Carolina continues to answer the call. Whenever they are tested, they come through so far this season. They have found a way. Sometimes it's not pretty, but it was pretty tonight in how South Carolina was able to execute, get the ball inside. I mean, that is ideal for South Carolina to how they, they need to score. But when teams do have the ability or try to take that away, then the guards step up. Or if their shots aren't falling, you know what else South Carolina does? They lock the opponents up defensively. It's a well-balanced basketball team. Jordan Nixon misses on the shot. And a traveling violation called on Sanaya Fagan. the crowd I do Gary Blair college Brian College Station has a great appreciation for what Gary Blair has done for the Texas A&M women's basketball program A legend in Aggie Land, Gary Blair. His final game at home. What a career it has been. What a moment. Texas A&M falling tonight, 89 to 48, but still so much to be said about this legendary head coach, Gary Blair, won a national championship. He has coached all Americans on this floor. And as of tonight, this floor bears his name. And as well it should because of the success that Gary Blair has brought to Bryan College Station. The women that have gone on to have successful careers, experience great things on the court, everything to do with Gary Blair. South Carolina gets the win tonight, 89 to 48, the entire SEC title belongs to South Carolina now, not just a share. And we saw history tonight, Aaliyah Boston, her 20th straight double-double. She's standing by with Steffi. Aaliyah, you make history tonight. You know, I, Sanaya gave you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of trouble last game where she said, you got to celebrate a little bit more. Did you feel like you celebrated in that moment after you made history? Yeah, I think I celebrated a little bit. Um, I'm just very excited. I'm just thankful to God that I'm able to do this and thankful for my teammates. Um, Texas A&M made it really hard tonight, but I'm just blessed that I got it. Thank you, Aaliyah. Thank you. Aaliyah Boston, 18 points, 10 rebounds. Her 20th straight double-double as South Carolina wins 89-48. to 48. Let's get you back to the studio with Drea and Coach Landers.